Pete. Here in Texas at Bowl El Paso for the title match of today's JBT event. Scratch is just getting started, so uh, it's Jake Gill versus Cortez Shank. Jacob is now at four tournaments left to win his first career title. And right now, it's not going well as Tess has an early lead, but it's only through four frames. In handicap, we're in the finishing stages as top seed Hannah Camarillo is playing second seed Chris Ortega. Chris has to win this match by 36 pins, and as it stands, he is only leading by four. So Chris has some making up to do here in the final three frames. Meanwhile, Gil has opened in three of the first four, unfortunately, on a pretty tough shot here today. Hannah's got some work to do with that 310. Gil was wonderful in the 10th frame of the last game, converting the 3910. And he had to have it to oust Angel Ortega. Gil has been so close to that first career title. Desperately, desperately wants to win it before he ages out here. This is his last season. Maybe if he doesn't win today, he's going to have to start doing some traveling. Maybe we'll see Jake out in Los Angeles or <laughs> Vegas or all. Hey, listen, Phoenix is not that far. Oregon. South Oregon, that would be a, a site. We'll pick him up, fly to Phoenix, southwest.com. $50 flights every once in a while. We'll get him. Chris pretty much has to strike here in the eighth to close the gap any go, reason go. Out. There you go, And he man. does it. Hold on, Sunset Strip today. Uh, some pretty dry patches here on this lane, but they just played pretty tough. Out of bounds to the right. Definitely no hole to the left. Bowlers have been moving around all over the place on the lane today, and that's what those striped patterns will do to you. Uh, low cuts today, 70. Mario to the left, speed. Mario to the left. 70 down in scratch, and uh, uh, what about 30 down or so in handicap? Big shot here for him in the ninth. Covered oh, all sorts of boards. Oh, hit it, oh. hit it! Oh! Yes. Yes. Super go, late baby. messenger covers that. Wow! I didn't think that was going to get there, and game on with that extra late messenger. I don't know what pin that was. Almost delighted 510 at the start and collapses everything. Great carry, that's why you throw that big hook ball. Tez had to back off all that noise, but no problem converting the two pin. And let's see if Hannah can answer here in the ninth. And she almost does. Good shot, definitely sparable. Super tight and going into the last game of the handicap division. Alfred Martinez had the lead at plus 37. He shot over 200 with his handicap and got bounced out of the finals from first to sixth. That was pretty painful for poor Alfred. As uh, everybody in the finals came up with big game fives to get into the top five. Hannah at 233 to grab the lead. Chris at 238 to grab second. Look out, but she misses the ninth in. Abigail Mark. <laughs> who finished third to Chris, shot 240 to get into that spot. Abigail had beaten Cesar Duran, who shot 228 to get into fourth, and Cesar had beaten Jeffrey Brining, who shot 210 to get into fifth. So everybody was clutch to get into the top five. But right now, Hannah, had, who had a big lead through seven frames, is having it all slip between her fingers right now. She needs to at least mark here in the tenth. And it has a lot of work to do before that happens as she buckets. Painful finish for Hannah right now. Painful game going on for Gil right now. First strike of the title match comes in the fifth. He trails by 36, but a lot of time left. Sarcastic applause from the fans. The good news for Jake was that Tez wasn't able to pull away. He stayed clean but couldn't double. Hannah has to have this spare. All right, she does. Boy, nine miss in the ninth and nine miss in the fourth were painful for our top handicap seed right now. Neither Hannah or Chris have a title, so someone's going to win there first. Both have plenty of top fives. Gil really got a strike here in the seventh to put any kind of pressure on. And he does. Got the Chris. Still in this match. Chris is capable of striking out. Chris is capable of opening. He's at that level on this tough batter. So at the washout there in the 10th for 134, give her an additional 36 for 170. Chris would nine out for 115, 144, 163, 172. Chris wins with a nine count. 
anything less you'd have a little work to do and Tez is suddenly getting nine counted to death over there making still an opportunity for Gil. Nine's a winner. Come on Bob, let's go! Oh no! And instead the eight, Ryan would, Ryan, would you fill in Hannah's score please at 183? 193 rather? All right, let's do some quick addition here. 171 if he eight outs is 194. One pin still wins, right? Let's make sure this 54, 93, 8, 1 is 171, which is 194. He needs a pin to win. I don't know if he knows this or not. You got it. Doesn't matter if he knows it. 8, there 1 go, is 171 go. for 194 and a one pin one win. Pin. One pin you win. Won, you got it by one, dude. <laughs> so Hannah's seven yes. count washout on the fill ball comes back to haunt her. One pin win. Six spare seven for Han in the tenth, eight one for Chris. Backs his way into the title. Holy cow. 194 to 193 is your handicap division final. Chris Ortega is a JBT champion. All he can eat, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, Jacob Gill would love to hear me call him a JBT champion in the next 10 minutes. He's working on a double in the eighth frame, trying to crawl back into this match, tugs it, and doesn't get away with the tug. It was hard to get away with the tug today. If he spares it up, he will trail court top seed Cortez Shank by 28 pins with only two frames to go. So Tez in control. Jacob up quickly, goes one-handed for the spare. He's got it, but he's got to put some X's on the board. Gil dug a super deep early hole for himself here with opens in three of the first five frames. Uh, nope, that's not, that's, there's a scoreboard. <laughs> that wasn't it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tez has stayed clean, but could have a 240 game. He got some rip and nine counts in the middle of this match to give Gil a glimmer of hope, but boy, even two energy can't tickle over that seven, and now it's just a super big trouble. Gil would have to strike out in the tenth and have Tez open twice, and I, uh, it's a betting day around the world with Pacquiao Mayweather and uh, the Kentucky Derby, but I would not put any bets on that happening, folks. Tez is just too good, I don't care how tough they are. Jacob is trying desperately to win that first career title after so many close calls before he ages out. He only does New Mexico events. So the uh, clock is ticking and Tez is about to put a nail in that coffin and he does. We really haven't talked about Tez much in this video here. So meanwhile, he swept two weekends in the last month, sweeping uh, Tucson and sweeping uh, Gold Coast. He's all right. So this is going to be win number 53, which is now going to put him only 10 behind Kyle King. We talk about only 10. 10 wins is what it takes to make the Hall of Fame. So he's only a Hall of Fame career short of catching Kyle King for the title seed. But then you flip that question around, is can he do it this season? We've only got about 15 tournaments or so left this season. Yeah, it's 53 more wins than I do. He's got 53 wins more than most people. <laughs> it's hard to win one of these tournaments, let alone a deck of cards worth of them. Ask Jacob Gill. Ask Hannah Camarillo right now. Oh. The only saving grace for Gill is it was such a blowout as it turns out. It's not as painful as a, another, another one or two win loss. I think it took... I think it took everything out of Jacob to win that last match, really. It was such an adrenaline burst for him to get through that last game. And that just uh, didn't have it there. As Tez throws a beatable 191, of course it would have been different in the 10th frame if it mattered. But as it stands, Tez wins 53. He's on his way to a third sweep in a calendar month. Gil will be back at it again tomorrow. Congrats to uh, uh, Bree for winning. Oh, look out. Congrats to Bree for uh, winning the girls, by the way, over Adele. And the one pin win over there in the handicap. Great stuff here. We'll right, wrap it up. We'll all go to our respective corners for the rest of the night. We'll do it all over again in Texas one more time this season tomorrow morning. We we'll see you then. Yes. Thank you, Jeff Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John Burp. Thank you guys. See you tomorrow.